So because of the release of Adobe Creative Suite 5, I figured I might as well just run through some of the things I've found really fun in Photoshop. I'm using the uh, extended version here, and I'm just going to go through a few of the things that are really fun to use. You may have seen um, other videos that Adobe has published with Puppet Warp. And uh, here's just a picture I found from Google. And uh, Puppet Warp pretty much warps an image based on position of pins that you can lay down. So um, all you have to do is go to Edit, Puppet Warp. And from this point, you're just going to want to set your pins down. So you just click, pins there, pins there. Is there. I'm going to pin the head and the torso. Now all you need to do is just click, to warp it at least, you just have to click the pin, hold alt, and just change its position. So let's, uh, let's move this leg here. Let's move it go that way. Okay, cool. Now, uh, say we wanted his uh, left leg to be on top. All you have to do is select that pin and change the depth. So now it's on top and it's pretty simple and it's very effective it even it moves its whole body with them so you make a wave and then when you move his head nothing really he's just bobbing it back and forth when you move his torso though not much really happens except just a slight twist of the whole body around the pin so it's pretty much just changing the arms and legs okay let's move on to the next one oh, I'm just gonna check that next we're gonna play around with content awareness so uh, you see this guy he's having some bad luck and um, to make this a uh, more interesting photo and less uh, disgusting here all we want to do is get rid of this right here. So all you need to do is take your lasso tool, select an area around what you want to delete, try not to go too far ahead, okay, and close it. Then go to Edit, Fill, and make sure Content Aware is on, and hit OK. Depending on the size of what you have selected, it's going to take longer to render. So since this was a small selection, it took a few seconds. And as you can see, there's really nothing noticeable when you're zoomed 100%. But of course, if you zoom in more, you're going to notice all this up here. You're going to see a little bit of blurriness where it tried to wrap around uh, the other side here. So let's go to a more complex content-aware test here. Okay. Um, this one has a little more background to it rather than just a blue shirt on. So, um, what, everything looks great except this bench over here. So, really all you have to do is select the area around the bench, and do the same thing, edit, fill, content aware, hit OK. This one take a long, a bit longer to render, but not too much longer. If you zoom out, it looks looks good looks pretty simple and you could even do more things say if you want to get rid of this tree this tree on the right side here you could try that obviously this is a bigger selection so it might take a little bit longer to render so that tree is gone and it basically looks like it just added more trees deleted uh, the tree as well and there's a little bit up here but that can just you could either just blur that away next time or you could just select and content aware fill it Let's go on to another content aware sample here. This one is has a bit more detailed background. I like the image of the Denver skyline here. But I don't like this man in the way. He's kind of ruining the image for us. So what we're going to want to do is easy as selecting the man in his shadow. To get a more easy feel to select it. Select 
parts around it. Don't select a square around him, though. Like, try to connect with his body here. And here we go. Let's try this. And let's just see. Look at that. You have a near-perfect image of what that image would look like if there were no person running in the way. You can still see there's some minor sketchiness down here, especially on the sidewalk crease there, but that's okay. You can always just touch that up later. Next we're going to uh, just play around with the image adjustments on this girl's face. So you go image adjustments. We're going to start off with the black and white. This is pretty cool. You have a normal black and white with some uh, different presets here, red filter, etc. Or you can add a tint, so maybe you get a nice sepia tint on this without having to use a filter. You know, get a blue, blue tint on this, you know. It's pretty simple and very effective in the long run. And then again, you could edit the curves, make it the curves haven't changed much, you know, just whatever. Make it pop out a little bit. It's pretty simple. Okay. And now another cool part of Adobe Photoshop CS5 is using their 3D. Now this function is only available if you have the extended version, which I do. What I have done here is I've just created a simple rounded rectangle with a, with a gradient inside. And um, to make the 3D work, you either have to select a text layer or a pixelated selection. So I have selected pixels, and I'm going to go to 3D. I don't know how to say this. Repousse. And uh, hit current selection. It's going to pop up with a menu, or a pop-up box, I should say. And it's going to start converting this thing into 3D. You can rotate it freely like this. Let it change. Obviously, it's got a render. See, that one's got some bevel on it. There's just a lot of presets already here. And you could just play around with other things, you know, add a little bit of uh, texture to it or so. And when you're done with it, just hit OK. And since this is a 3D smart object, you can still go around and rotate it. Rotate it. So amazing. It's simple and really effective. So, um, yeah, you can also do this with text. Uh, I'm not going to show you that because text seems to take a bit longer to render on its way, so it's just going to slow down and make the video look choppier. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. It's uh, pretty simple and uh, very, very revolutionary for a program that has been around for so long. Yeah, um, Photoshop CS5, everybody.